Hello, friends. Welcome to this very special edition of Enjoying the Journey. I always love studying the Word of God with you, but this week we are going to concentrate on one couple from the New Testament, a Bible husband and wife that the Lord gives us that I think is a tremendous example for us all. Now, uh, right up front, let me tell you, you may be a married person. This is certainly for you. Or you may be an unmarried person. Uh, It may be that you have contemplated marriage or perhaps uh, your loved one has already gone to be with the Lord. This is the wonderful thing about the Word of God because no matter what station in life you're in, what season of life you're in, God's Word is always applicable. So I want to encourage you to dig into Scripture with us this week, and we're going to begin at the first place this couple is mentioned. It's found in the book of Acts. Uh, Acts, of course, a book of action full of so many great characters and amazing uh, adventures of faith. But when you come to Acts chapter number 18, you come to Paul on one of his missionary journeys. Uh, I think one of the great studies of the Bible is to study all of the people that were connected to the Apostle Paul. You know, Paul gets a lot of attention, and rightly so. God greatly used him, but think of all of the people that he influenced and all of the people that influenced him in connection to the work of the Lord. You see, the work of God is never done just by one person. It's never done just by the famous people. In fact, the couple that I'm going to introduce you to, they were not office holders, as best we can tell, in the early New Testament church. They were not world famous in their day, uh, but they made a real impact for eternity. The couple I'm talking about, if you haven't figured it out already, is Aquila and Priscilla. And Acts chapter 18 tells us how they first come into contact with the Apostle Paul. Acts 18 verse 1 says, After these things Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. So we get a very basic introduction. We have their names. The husband's name is Aquila. The wife's name is Priscilla. In some places in Scripture, a shortened form of her name is used, Prissa, but it's the same lady. It's a husband and wife that were not only living together, they were laboring together because they worked together in a business that they owned. They were tent makers. And from all human standpoint, this is how they cross paths with the Apostle Paul because they are in the same occupation. You remember Paul made tents uh, to support himself and not to be a burden to the churches. And so There's a a very human side to this, but never forget that the work of God is bigger than man, that it is not just the human. It is not just coincidence or accident that brings them together. It is providence. God is doing something here for Paul and for Aquila and Priscilla by allowing them to come together. I hope you'll start looking for these divine appointments in life because they're everywhere. Somebody that you're going to cross paths with today, God put them in your path. Someone the Lord has brought into your life, uh, they are there for a specific reason. Maybe on the front side, it's not fully clear why or what God will do. But just know this, the Lord has a way of bringing people together to accomplish his own purpose. Now, uh, let's lay a little foundation, if we may, today. Uh, We're going to learn a lot about them this week uh, through this study because Aquila and Priscilla are found in four different New Testament books. Think about that. Four different books of the New Testament reference this same couple. That's that's fascinating to me. Uh, They are referenced by both Luke and the Apostle Paul. And, uh, in fact, in those four books, you will find their names given six different times. So it sounds to me like this is not just a couple that Paul really liked or Luke wrote about. This is a couple the Holy Spirit wants us to know. So we want to place the emphasis where God places the emphasis. Why are they even mentioned in Scripture? Why do we even have their names? Why are they emphasized? And, of course, the answer to that question is that God has a great message for us 
through not just their marriage, but through their ministry. Uh, They are not uh, evangelists. They are not pastors, and they are not deacons. Uh, They are not what we might call a foreign missionary, but they are servants of Christ. And God gives them a tremendous work to do in the early New Testament church. Let's start here in verse number one. The Bible says, after these things, Paul departed from Athens. Everybody remember Athens, that place of idolatry, uh, the altar to the unknown God. So he's been preaching there. And he leaves Athens, the Bible says, and he came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. So where are they when we first meet them? They're in Corinth. Now, before we're done with our study, you're going to see them in a variety of cities. This is the great truth uh, that God has designed it so that you can live the Christian life wherever you are. God is not bound by geography. God is everywhere. He's a very present help in time of trouble. Uh, He is the omnipresent God. So there is not a place on earth where you can go that God is not there and that God will not meet you there and enable you there. But I think this is really important. The first mention we have of this couple, uh, the the introduction to them, is in one of the most wicked, worldly cities in the Roman Empire. They're living in Corinth. Now, why is that significant? Because I believe the Lord is showing us that you can have a Christian home even in Corinth. I don't know where you're living today, and I don't just mean geographically. I mean circumstantially. I don't know what the spiritual tone is like in your part of the world or the spiritual temperature uh, in those that you interact with, but I want to tell you on the authority of the Word of God that the Lord works everywhere, that the gospel is true always, uh, that the power of the Holy Spirit is yours, and you can have a Christian home even in Corinth. Uh, Let's begin with a couple principles, all right? The first is... Uh, that this husband and wife, Aquila and Priscilla, served the Lord. This is the most obvious thing, but they served the Lord together. It was not him trying to serve the Lord or her trying to serve the Lord, but they were a team. Can I tell you, this is God's intended way. Now, it doesn't always happen. We're not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Uh, They both were believers, but it was more than that. It was more than just they were both Christians. They were both serious about serving the Lord. And so we have here the beautiful principle of oneness. The divine math is one plus one equals one. Only God can do that. And so the Lord brings one man, one woman together, go all the way back to the book of Genesis, and you find this from the onset with Adam and Eve, and God makes them one, one in spirit, one in soul, one in body, this is the Lord's way. It might interest you to know that every time we find Aquila and Priscilla in Scripture, they are always mentioned together. One is never mentioned without the other. That means more than simply they stayed married and stayed together. There's a lot of people who stay married and stay together, and they're not one. It means that this husband and wife uh, dynamic duo had made up their minds that they were spiritually going to take the next step together. And they were going to serve the Lord right where they were, even in Corinth. I want to challenge you, wherever you are today, uh, whoever you are today, make up your mind that right where you are, in whatever circumstance you find yourself, you're going to begin serving the Lord. Now, that starts with knowing Jesus as your personal Savior. You, you have to know Christ, but it continues with being committed to have a truly Christian home. Just because you're both Christians or everybody in the household is Christians doesn't make it a Christian home. A Christian home is about being true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to challenge you to read Acts chapter number 18 on your own time because in our next study, we're going to come back to it, walk through the verses that follow, and you're going to be amazed at the principles we learn from this husband and wife, Aquila and Priscilla. Uh, The full-length book uh, that we have written on New Testament marriage is something I hope you will get your hands on and read and study and share with others. You can go to enjoyingthejourney.org. 
Go to our store and you can find the audio version of the book, the digital version, and the paperback version. Uh, I hope you'll get a copy of it and make this a study of the Word of God, not just a study of somebody in history, but a study of the Word of God to take the principles from their life and apply it to your own. God bless you as you study the Bible and serve the Lord.